Hello everyone. Today, I will explain how to speed up our computer by cleaning the unnecessary data on our computer and how we can use our computer in the best way, in the most efficient way, according to the features of our computer. First, we will clean the unnecessary data that builds up on our computer over time to speed up our computer. First, I open the startup and find run, open run. First, let me get the middle part of the run. Our first command is temp. We type temp and say OK. Friends, the temp folder may contain temporary files, cached files, cookies, or some temporary files related to the update. Here, all the files in the temp folder. Ctrl A and delete. I say yes. And if it can't delete, we say skip. So that's two files that it couldn't delete. We've done that. Then I open run again, and this time, we type temp between the two percentages and click OK. This is also the folder that we use as a user, which we use as local temp, that is, the folder where new temporary files are hosted. Look, 1,669 folders have been created here, and a lot of unnecessary cache files and folders have been created. We delete them. I select all of them and delete them. I say yes. I say continue. Look, six odd gigabytes of unnecessary data is now being cleared. So many folders, so many files, so many folders have been created. Time passes. If you have a file that it cannot delete in any way, skip it. Again, we type recent in the run window. When we type recent, there will be some shortcuts on our computer. I'm opening these as well. Look, I just said OK. There's kilobytes of data, shortcuts. These accumulate over time and can tire the computer. In the same way, I select all of this and delete it. Temporary files need to be deleted over time and cleaned. Yes. OK. It was deleted like this. The recent folder, that is, the folder with shortcuts, was cleaned in this way. Our other code again, I quickly open the run application from the Windows plus R key and write prefetch here. Friends, I click on prefetch, OK. And I say go on. Again, this is inside Windows. There is a folder called profetch. Over time, there are some small files that it runs in the background in order to open them faster from program leftovers or files that it caches, and over time, they multiply so much that they can reach gigabytes. In the same way, I select all of these and delete them, I say yes. If it fails to delete, we say skip. Look, friends, we have cleaned all of these, whether it is the temp folder, or profetch, or resent, with shortcuts. It really takes up so much space on our computer that it can reach serious sizes in memory after a certain period of time. It takes up a lot of space over time and limits our usage space. I open the run again. Friends, this time, our command is misconfig. Misconfig. Friends. In the system configuration window here, there is a separate tab as pre-installation. At the bottom of this bottom, there are advanced options at the bottom of the pre-install tab. We click here. In these advanced preload options, you can use friends by setting the upper limit of how many processors you have or how many RAMs you have. For example, here, the computer can run when it needs it or how many processors you have, for example, including virtual, some of them can be 8, some of them can be 12, some of them can be 4, some of them can be 2, so your highest number can be 8. We choose whatever your highest number is. We chose our processor number as 12. We activate the tick on the memory upper limit, and it says here that we have 16 gigabytes of RAM. When you turn it on later, the upper memory limit might show 0 because the RAM it is already intelligently taking in and releasing data all the time. It does this with its own planning. This is how we set the upper memory limit. 
increasing the number of processors to 12 or 8 will definitely not tire your computer. It will use it only when necessary. You can choose the number of processors with 8 cores and continue. Since I have 12, I increase it to 12 and put the tick on the memory upper limit and click OK. After doing this, there are services and startup as other. Friends, now we have opened the task manager from the startup section. This is how the task manager came to us. You see the startup check friends. At the moment the status usually shows programs as disabled and enabled. These programs are the programs that appear when our computer is first turned on and the computer tries to run immediately. For example, the lathe is right. Whether it's Steam or Microsoft, there are some programs like phone connection. If they are active, I turn them off or you can click on them and enable them. For example, I don't need it, so I right click and disable it. For example, I need real tech audio technology, so I leave that on. Windows command is Microsoft's own thing, so I leave that as well. I don't need Xbox right now. I don't need to turn on Xbox's application services when the computer starts up in the first place. I'm disabling that and I'm definitely not disabling that because it's Windows security antivirus. Right now I have three programs that the computer will open at startup. Friends, there are so many programs that when the computer restarts itself or when it first starts, it opens all those programs. It tries to run programs and this makes the computer take longer to recover and slows it down even more. You can run them manually later, especially the programs that don't work for you here, whether it's torrents, steam or other programs that are installed later. It will allow you to take the initial load of the computer, friends. In this way, I also set the programs that the computer runs at startup and close this window. Then we say apply and click OK. After clicking OK, the system configuration here will ask us to restart our computer and we restart our computer and continue our process from where we left off. As another step, cleaning unnecessary data on our computer is not over yet because we clean both the caches and the files that the other computer receives with the update, whether they are the residues left over from the programs we run. We continue cleaning. Now we turn on the computer. I turn on this computer. I turn on this computer. I turn on the C disk where our operating system is installed. Usually I go to our C disk, right click on it and click on properties. I close this window now. When I open the properties section where Windows C is installed, there is a clean up disk section here. We will clean up the disk of drive C. I click on clean up disk. Yes, the disk cleanup screen came up. Now we can turn it off by saying OK. There is a section on cleaning system files here. Friends, we choose the section on cleaning system files. So of course we can do it from here without choosing it. There are a lot of temporary files, but if we choose system files, we will at least clean them, whether they are update remnants or files related to configuration settings. So I click on the clean system files section. So I click on the clean system files required account. See the Windows Update Cleanup, look at it. It found 32.8 gigabytes of unnecessary data in the computer right now. Before, I didn't have that much data in my recycle bin. I mean, there were three or five small files, especially temp files, temporary files, small images. Look, it found 32.8 gigabytes in total, Windows error reports, etc., etc. For example, thumbnails have created an unnecessary space of 1.63 gigabytes, now 32.8 gigabytes. See friends, now I have 156 gigabytes of free space left. So much so that this unnecessary data has filled 32.8 gigabytes here. When I say OK, it will now proceed to the cleaning process. Here I click OK. After I click on all, it says are you sure you want to permanently delete these files? I say delete files. This does not delete any of your personal files. It deletes all the junk files that are created in Windows, whether it's temporary files, language files, recycle language files. If you have files in recycle, it will clean them up.
temporary files, thumbnails, cleanup files, all of that. Our process is complete. Thanks to this process we have done. Look, let's come to this computer right now. It's up to 185 gigabytes, as you can see. So, by cleaning up these junk files that build up over time, we can keep our computer cleaner, more performant. Then there are the programs that we open at the beginning of our computer. We can disable them, the ones that are not useful to us, to make it boot up faster, to make it recover faster. On some computers, when we first turn on the computer, different folders, different files, different music files, videos, etc, etc. The computer uses a lot of energy and a lot of RAM to open them all. And while opening them, it becomes relatively slower. So if we have many folders or many files on our computer, we can put them in fewer folders or fewer places as much as possible. Let's say we have different different files like this. We have different Word files, we have Excel files, we have a new text document. Let's say to open each one of these, it has to use the computer RAM, it has to use the computer processor. And the more objects there are, the later the computer opens. For this, let's say you can create a new folder. We can call it Programs. We can make a folder called Programs like this. We can even change its icon like this, Properties. Go to Customize and Change Icon. And here you can choose different icons. See, there are a lot of icons here. Let's say a green arrow, like this. I say Apply, I say OK. Let's say these folders here. I take all of the files and put them in my new folder that I created as these programs. Friends, look. Both your desktop will be simpler and your computer will not tire my computer and processor at every startup and it will open faster and close faster. Having an average of 10 to 15 icons on the desktop will not tire your computer but having hundreds of folders really tires the computer. So I really see that it will cause it to come to itself later in the first startup. We select the objects and let's say that there is something that will be useful to us. We put it, we take all the others and put them in the folder. It will be smoother and more organized. It will be more organized in that way. You can change the icon and adjust it according to yourself. Friends, these are what I will show for now and then we will see you in the following videos on different topics. Goodbye.